Hey everyone, welcome back to Headband Maven. Today, we're talking about Dumbo. No, not that Dumbo. I had you worried there for a second. No, not that Dumbo. I've never even actually seen that Dumbo. We're talking about the fourth animated feature in the Disney canon, that Dumbo. Dumbo ended up being actually a saving grace for Disney in a way, um, after they had put so much money into Fantasia, it didn't perform nearly well enough to recoup the losses from production. So what Disney really needed in the late 1930s and early 1940s was a movie that was cheap to make and would make enough money to actually keep the studio afloat. At 64 minutes, Dumbo is actually the second shortest movie in the Disney canon. The distributor at the time actually wanted them to add another 10 minutes or so to the movie, but Disney told them no both because they didn't think they could stretch the story anymore and because the story, the studio could not actually afford to make Dumbo any longer than it actually is. Despite all this, Dumbo would actually go on to be the most financially successful Disney film of the 1940s and eventually go on to win a 1941 Oscar for best original score. The story of Dumbo is actually based on a storyline for a children's novelty toy called a Rollabook. Um, the studio had been hired to uh, illustrate the story of Dumbo the Flying Elephant, but Disney saw the potential to flesh out the story a little more than the toy did, and so he bought the rights to it, and the rest is history. So all of that being said, let's get into Dumbo. So Dumbo opens with a flock of storks delivering babies to circus animals in Florida. Oh yeah, fun fact, this is also Disney's first film set in the U.S. So the stork carrying Mrs. Jumbo's baby gets lost and doesn't end up catching up to them until a little bit later. Um, initially, all of the elephants are so excited. There's a new baby elephant until the baby sneezes and he's revealed to have giant ears, at which point they begin mocking him. And Mrs. Jumbo does not take their shit. Mother of the year, honestly. She, get, she gets all of the points, all of the points because she puts all of the other elephants in her in their places and then defends her baby against shitty teenagers at the next circus stop. Unfortunately, that act causes the ringmaster to lock her up because she's determined to be too dangerous. Poor little Dumbo is left as a pariah, ostracized by the other elephants. So enter Timothy Q. Mouse, who witnesses Dumbo's mistreatment and is determined to help him show everyone how great he is and get his mom out of the clink. I, I love Timothy so much. Um, he, he is everything that Jiminy Cricket was not. Jiminy Cricket just wishes he could be as great as Timothy Q. Mouse, honestly. Yes, he was trying to make a name for himself, but he actually takes care of Dumbo and seems to genuinely care about him. When, when the the other elephants are ostracizing Dumbo, you know, he goes, he just wants to join them to eat and they kind of block him out. Timothy marches right in there and sends them all climbing up the poles of the tent. Like, he's such a great guy, or mouse. He's such a great mouse and he's great. I just, I love him. So anyway, Timothy comes up with an idea for a stunt that Dumbo can be a part of. Unfortunately, everything goes wrong. Dumbo ends up tripping over his ears, knocking down the Tower of Elephants and bringing the entire big top down with him. For Dumbo, unfortunately, he gets demoted to clown. Um, and it, it makes him, he's very sad, he's very depressed, so Timothy takes him to see his mom. And it is, it is such a bittersweet moment. Like, I wanted to cry. It was, it was, it was, that that moving to me because she can't see him he can't see her but she sticks her trunk out through the bars of the cage or not the cage the cart she's rocking him outside she can feel him and it's just it's so sad when they have to leave like i was like no give him like five more minutes so after this heart touching moment dumbo ends up with the hiccups so timothy takes him to a bucket of water to take a drink Unfortunately, that bucket has champagne in it, so Dumbo gets drunk, and so does Timothy. Timothy falls into the bucket and also ends up getting drunk, and they hallucinate these pink elephants, well, pink elephants at first, and just, it, it's a trip. So the next morning, they end up being waken up by a group of crows 
at the top of a tree. How did they get there, you ask? Well, they come to the realization that the only real way they could have possibly gotten up there was to have flown all the way to the top of the tree. So with the help of a black feather gifted to Timothy by the leader of the crows, Timothy is able to convince Dumbo that he can fly through some psychological manipulation. And during the next circus performance, instead of plummeting into a giant pie at the bottom of a tall tower, Dumbo ends up flying away completely free of pie and just completely shocking everyone in attendance at the, at the circus. This, of course, creates a media sensation later. Dumbo's mom is released. They get their own car on the train. They live happily ever after. They don't actually say that, but it is implied. So it's been a very long time since I actually watched Dumbo. I don't think I've seen it since I was a kid. Um, it didn't. It didn't make it to DVD in my house. Um, so I really went into it only. I had like a vague memory of what the story was about, and I knew about the pink elephants because everybody knows about the pink elephants and the hallucinations. <laughs> this is actually the first one that. I got a real nostalgia hit off of, which really surprised me because, like I said, like I, I know watched it as a kid, but I didn't watch it a lot, I didn't think. Um, and I just, it was a bit of an emotional experience, to be honest. Um, Mrs. Jumbo, out to protect her son, um, and only being able to interact with him through steel bars, um, it's just, it's heartbreaking. She was being a good mom, and she got locked away for it. And then poor Dumbo getting ostracized just for being different. Like, it hit me deep. Like, I, yeah, I, I had an emotional reaction to this one in a way that I have not had an emotional reaction to any Disney movie yet. In in the watch through, at least. Um, I think I have to put Dumbo ahead of Snow White in my rankings, to be honest. Um... You know, it's it's the second shortest movie. It you know, it, there's nothing particularly remarkable about it. I mean, this was like this was for Disney. This was a cash grab in in most respects. Um, but like, I can't help it. Like, my heart has been stolen by a cute little baby elephant with with big ears. <laughs> and so, without further ado. We'll get into the last part of the video, the headband, inspired by Dumbo. So it's just black, or not black, this is gray. It's gray fabric on a plastic headband, and then I took pink ribbon and wrapped it around. So obviously the gray is for Dumbo. The pink is from, well I guess you could say it's from the ears of the elephants but also kind of took a little inspiration from the pink elephant hallucinations as well. In the in on the side here, we have a black feather. I'm not really sure how I like the angle that it comes off with, but I, I couldn't get it to work. And I don't know, it's fine. I like the rest of it, but yeah, I'm not so sure about the feather, but the feather is what really makes it, you know, Dumbo. It, it's like, yes, it's Dumbo because there's a black feather. So. Oh no, it's stuck in my hair. Okay, I guess I guess it doesn't look so weird. I have to bend down because otherwise it disappears. I keep I can't go over too far because otherwise it bends in with my bookcase, but yeah. There we go. There's our Dumbo inspired headband. So with all of that, I guess that's the end of the video. Um Thanks again for watching. Next up is Bambi, so tune in for that. All right. Bye.